Okay, welcome to the cartoon version of Friday's lecture. What we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, more complicated ways of making fractal plants. So uh, just to review our original plant, we start out with a leaf on a stick. And then we have a rule that says that uh, uh, we start with a stem and then um, we have a branch point and we turn to the left and we draw a plant at level I minus one. We go back to the branch point, we turn right, and then we draw another plant at uh, level I minus one. Um, so if, for example, on the right, we start at iteration two, that means that we're gonna have uh, uh, two branch points between the root and every leaf. And here's the code we had to draw our original plant as a recursive function. So you remember it takes as input the level, like the number of levels of recursion, and t, the position of the turtle. So if we're at the base case, level 0, we just draw the leaf. That was our first plant. Um, at all other iterations, what we do is we first draw the stem. Um, and then we save the position of the turtle at the branching point. We turn the turtle to face to the left, draw uh, recursively a plant at uh, level I minus one, go back to the branch point, turn the turtle facing to the right, and then draw another plant at uh, level I minus one. Okay, and that gives us uh, our exponentially increasing in complexity plant. So you can see how the plant you get out of that recursive function sort of relates to real plants. For example, this gnarled old cherry tree in which the trunk uh, splits off into two main branches, each of those split off into two main branches and so on. On the other hand, the cherry tree is a lot more interesting and complicated looking. Um, for one thing, the branches are uh, sort of curved and, and gnarled and bendy looking. Um, for another thing, the angles at which they branch aren't uh, always exactly, you know, pi over 10 degrees or something like that. Um, and to be absolutely honest, this cherry tree is, has only attained this perfect looking form because it was heavily pruned as it was growing. Someone was trying to make it look like this. This totally natural oak tree, on the other hand, uh, has a more complicated looking shape. Um, some things to notice about this one are that it has uh, a well-defined trunk uh, that goes, you know, more or less straight up and then branches uh, branch off of the trunk. Um, and the branches between the trunk and the first branches, uh, that, that angle tends to be a little um, smaller than the angle between the primary branches and the secondary branches, or the secondary branches and the tertiary branches. Um, so that's one thing you might keep track of. Another thing is that the size of the secondary and tertiary branches gets a lot smaller as you go on up. Um, so you might want to uh, work that into your program. So a few things you might want to add to your program. Randomness in angles um, and uh, possibly lengths. Putting curves or bends into your branches. And again, you might do those randomly. And then finally, as the level changes, think about changing the uh, thickness and the length of branches. Um, in particular, uh, remember that thing about uh, the angle at which branches leave the trunk is a little bit smaller than the angle at which branches leave each other. So now let's look at some branching patterns that'll give you a strong central trunk, kind of like that oak tree had. 
So here's a simple one. Um, we take our initial leaf on a stick, and our rule is that we replace that by a little stem and a branching point. And at that branching point, we um, uh, have three branches, uh, each one looking like our original leaf on a stick. Um, uh, so one of those goes straight up and forms the trunk, and the other two branch off to form the side branches. So you get a, a, a lot more branching here. Um, and so I would strongly recommend that uh, you put in some stuff about the thickness and the length of the central branch as opposed to the thickness and the length of the side branches um, in order to get this to look natural. So I'm pretty sure you could figure out how to write that previous one as a recursive function. Um, this one is a little uh, more difficult, but it gives very natural looking trees. So the idea is that we're going to have two branches at the branch point, as before. Um, but uh, one of them will go out to the side, and the other one will go straight up. But in order to uh, keep from having all your branches on one side, what you've got to do with a pattern like this is um, alternate the sides at which the uh, branches are going to appear. So the first branch appears here on the right, and then uh, at the next iteration, the next branch appears on the left. So here's one way you could implement that as a recursive function. Again, our inputs are the turtle, t, um, and i, the level of recursion that we want. Um, and then um, uh, we'll have a variable d which keeps track of the branching direction. We'll let that be either negative 1 or 1. So what we do, again, if uh, i equals 0, uh, we draw a twig and a leaf. Um, and then otherwise, um, we remember the turtle position, uh, and we turn either left or right, depending on what d is. Um, and then we draw a tree at uh, level i minus 1, going in whatever direction that was. Uh, go back to the branch point, um, toggle the branch direction back again, um, and then uh, without turning, so that we keep going straight, uh, we draw uh, again a tree at level i minus 1. So that's trees. Of course, if you go outside and walk around now, uh, what really hits you over the head, or certainly what really hits me over the head, are the flowers, um, which are uh, herbaceous plants. They're never going to grow into trees. They're not woody. So what are, what are, what's the structure of these guys like? Well, let's look, for example, at this lavender plant here. You can see it's got a gazillion stems each one topped by a flower. And the flowers all end up at roughly the same height, even though the stems are branching off from each other um, at different levels, going all the way up. And also, the stems are sort of furred with these uh, cute little leaves. So here's a scheme by which we might get a plant that looks like that. So our initial plant is uh, uh, has a stem a uh, flower, and two leaves. And our rule is, at the next iteration, what we're going to do is we're going to add um, two branches. Each branch is going to be uh, its own stalk. Um, and the first time, we're going to add branches that uh, each have uh, two pairs of leaves on them. Um, and then at the next iteration, when um, i equals 2, say, we're going to add uh, two more branches, uh, except that each of those is going to have three leaves. Um, so the complexity of the branches that we add, the length and the number of leaves, depends on the level i. So I'm going to implement this using um, a subroutine to draw the stalks. Uh, so a stalk is just one of those stems with a bunch of leaves on the sides and a flower at the top. Um, so again, if i equals 0, we're just going to draw the flower. Um, 
Otherwise, we're going to um, uh, draw a twig uh, with two leaves and then recursively draw a stalk of uh, length i minus one. So the, uh, the so if you call you know draw stalk um, with uh, uh, i equals three, what you're going to end up with is three pairs of leaves because it'll call itself recursively and then call itself recursively again and then call itself recursively again and then finally the fourth time it'll draw the flower. And then given that subroutine to draw the stalk, uh, then we can draw uh, the lavender plant. Um, so the initial lavender plant for uh, i equals one is uh, just this, the stalk that has the two leaves and the, uh, the little flower on top. Um, and then uh, at all other iterations, what we do is um, we draw the stem, get to the branch point, turn left and draw a stalk um, uh, at uh, uh, level i, turn right and draw a stalk at level i, and then going back to the branch point one more time, uh, go straight up the middle with the, the central uh, stalk and draw the plant at level i minus one. So finally, for inspiration, I want to show you um, a couple of the plants that people have drawn in this class in years past. These were uh, some of the ones that I liked from a few years ago. So this person has done a, a beautiful job on uh, the tree. It's um, you know our basic simple branching thing, but they've thrown in a bunch of randomness to make it look nice. There's randomness in the lengths and the angles of the branches. Uh, the thickness decreases as you go up, and the colors of the leaves are all different. Plus, they've put a lot of effort into background elements, including this pretty grass, where the bottom of every grass blade gets darker as you go down, um, and uh, the moon and the bats in the background. I don't know. Very nice. This person did a really snazzy background um, by uh, putting in a photo, which unfortunately was a lot easier to do with the old OpenGL API than it is with this one. So um, uh, not really an option for you guys. However, I threw this one in because the tree itself is really cool. Um, the, so this is, you can tell it's supposed to be a Joshua tree, or at least I think it's supposed to be a Joshua tree. Um, and uh, the, they've captured really nicely the uh, sort of segmenty um, form of the trunk and the branches. Um, and then the leaves are just showing up as these uh, uh, little spiky things on the ends. Um, again, good use of randomness, nice changes of thickness, um, and uh, an actual attempt to uh, reproduce an actual botanical specimen. This one, to be honest, I have no idea what they're trying to draw, maybe a ginkgo. Um, but the picture itself is very, very attractive. Um, it's got nice use of curves. It has actually pretty looking flowers, pretty looking leaves, and uh, even though it's not realistic, the sort of rhythmic effect is very appealing. So, you know, you get points for aesthetic. And finally, it may be the opposite extreme. This one uses a lot of complexity to give a very realistic uh, feel. So again, you have uh, the, the neat grass placed kind of randomly. Uh, we've got random color changes and shape changes in the leaves. Um, uh, and uh, we're going down, I don't know, five, maybe six levels of recursion here so that the trees uh, are, have gotten, you know, very bushy and seem, uh, you know, more realistic because of that. And then, you know, the hills, the rocks, and the nice uh, gradient in the sky in the background, you know, so that it's sort of sunsetty looking. Very pretty. Okay, that's it. Happy drawing. Have a good and productive weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.